Welcome back to Introduction to Programming. Today what we are going to look at is the analog circuit in the Arduino device. So first we need to deal with the question, what is analog? What does that actually mean? So let's take a look. So if a computer works on simple on and off switches and an analog system works on an infinite values between the on and off, it is the real sound of something. A good example would be a CD player versus a record player. And sometimes we have that debate about which one is better. We're actually going to take a look at that later on in the lesson today. So how does a computer, a digital computer, actually do analog sampling? So your computer, the Arduino microcontroller, does sampling at 10 bits. Now 10 bits is a 10 place binary number, which means it has 10 ones in it. And that's an equivalence to 1024 decimal, which gives us the ability to get the numbers 0 to 123, which means we could take any analog sample, any analog sound or analog voltage, and divide it up into 124 different levels, 0 through 123. The more samples of an analog single that, signal that we can take, the better approximation to the actual signal that is being recorded. You are still going to miss things because you're only recording single samples of our analog signal. Our calculus students might recall there's something called a Riemann sum. This is very similar to what that is in calculus, a Riemann sum. So if we think about this, we can say which is better, the record or the CD player? The painting versus the high resolution TIFF on your computer screen. Basically, life versus the screen. Which is a better representation? And you'll hear uh, musicians talk about this, that the record player always had such a rich sound, whereas there's something missing from the digital sound, your MP3 player or your CD player. Apple has gotten better in some of the digital high definition audio that they use, but you're still missing something because you're only, uh, we, or you see what I mean? If we only sample some of it, we're only getting like every other word. I don't know, it was meant to be a joke. So what do we do? Well, in real life, we in increase the resolution of our televisions. 4K televisions are super, super, crisp and sharp. High resolution audio is almost real life. When you pick the line, when analog versus digital stops being a question, that's when we've reached that point where our resolution digitally is so high that we cannot for any reason tell the difference between the digital signal and the analog signal. And we're almost there, not quite yet, but we are getting close. So here's a couple examples. If we look at this picture, the picture on the left is a lower resolution picture. It's sampled. The picture on the right is a higher resolution picture, which means there's more samples. And it's clear that there is a lot more crispness to the picture. Here's another example. And another example. So we can see in these pictures that there's a graininess to them or a blurriness to them on the left. And then on the right, the image is much crisper. It's a higher resolution, more sampling. 
The Arduino analog in reads in voltage. It's a varied voltage, and we can divide that voltage up into 1,024 different voltages. It comes in increments of the voltage divided by 1024, which is about 0 0.005, or 5 one-thousandths of a volt. When you're writing data out, it's not so clear with the Arduino. You see, the Arduino is an analog. It's digital. So to get it to produce an analog signal just it doesn't make any sense. There's no way for it to make an analog signal for real. So we need to simulate that analog signal with something called pulse width modulation, or PWM. And you can see that on the Arduino board. The way it works is imagine a light switch. And the light switch turns on and off really, really fast. In fact, it's so fast on our boards, it's about 500 cycles per second to 1,000 cycles per second for some of the more advanced boards. Cycles per second is called hertz. When you're done flipping that switch on and off, we can look at the amount of time the light was on versus the amount of time the light was off, and the average of that time will give us what the brightness of the light is perceived by us. The same thing is true for voltage. If we look at the different boards, we have the Uno, Nano, and the Mini. These are the PWM pins, and we can see that it's about 490 hertz, or 490 cycles per second. But it also has two special pins that run closer to 1,000 hertz, so we can take advantage of that. And we can see that pretty much all of these boards have at least two pins that are closer to 1,000 cycles per second. Uh, some of these special boards here only go at 732 hertz. We can see that some of this, this board really only goes at 500 hertz. Um, we have a, a, a special one called the Dew, which is 1,000 hertz. And then with the 101, we can see, again, it's, it's 490 and 980. So when we look at this on a graph, when we look at that pulse width modulation picture, if we are talking about 100% of the time the light is just on, then we're going to get 5 volts all the time. If the light is on for 75% of the time, that means we're going to get 75% of the voltage as the average. And we can see this line here. That gives us our average. If it's 50% of the time, then 50% of the voltage is going to be perceived by the circuit. So 50% of 5 volts is 2.5 volts. If we do 25% of the time, that means the circuit is going to feel a 1 and a quarter volts that is in the final circuit. So we can kind of fake this idea of analog signal where instead of just being on and off, which is what the digital would be, either 0 vo volts or 5 volts. So if we plugged it into a digital pin, it's either on 0 volts or, um, excuse me, off 0 volts, on 5 volts. But with this pulse width modulation pin, we can trick the, the circuit into believing that there is less voltage than there actually is. So our analog that we're going to use is not going to be a record player. It's going to be something called a potentiometer. This is what's called a voltage divider. In essence, inside of the potentiometer is two resistors. And we have what we call three legs, either ends of the resistors and then the middle where the two resistors connect. When we build the circuit, we're going to connect the two ends to either high voltage, one to high and one to low, and we could do it in either direction. So it could be high and low, or it could be low and high. It doesn't matter to the potentiometer. Uh, it does matter in which way you turn the knob, whether to increase or decrease the voltage on the middle leg, which is called the wiper. This is where the analog output signal comes. 
So when you turn the potentiometer, the voltage goes from 0 to 5 and any level in between. And the faster our resolution, the more hertz that we have, the better our perceived circuit is going to pick up that voltage. But we need at least 500 hertz. Otherwise, then our circuit is going to act kind of funky. So here's our circuit diagram. You may want to pause the video at this point, and you're going to build this circuit in Tinkercad. So if we take a look, I'll talk it through, and then you can pause it and, and build it. This is our potentiometer. It's just this blue dial. And then we could see that it has three legs on it. The first leg in my build, I connected to the ground. And all I did actually was take our build from the previous lesson and get rid of the button and just have our LED. So I can see I have the first leg connected to the ground, the last leg connected to five volts. And the way I connected the leg to five volts is I ran a jumper between the leg and my power bar, which we know goes across horizontally, whereas these channels go vertically. Then I ran the power bar all the way down to the 5 volt in, not to the 5 volt in, to the 5 volt out on the Arduino board. The middle leg I connected all the way down to this analog zero pin. And that's all we have to do to modify the circuit because we've already had the ground, we already have the LED and the resistor connected, and I believe when we did the build we had our LED connected already to a PWM pin, which is number three. And we can tell that by the tilde. So that little tilde there tells us that it is a PWM pin. And we can see there's multiple, they're all marked. So now we're going to take a look at the code. And in our code, we have first some data that we're setting up globally. We're setting our LED pin to three, and we're setting what's called the pot pin or potentiometer pin to A0, which is that analog zero. Then we have our setup, which only runs one time, and we're setting the pin modes for the LED pin to be output and the pin mode for the potentiometer to be input. So this time we're gonna do an input with our potentiometer. Then we have our loop read, the first thing we're going to do is read the value through our analog of our pot pin. So whatever we have our potentiometer set at, we're going to read it. Then we're going to turn the LED on, and then we're going to delay our pot pin by um, a certain amount. So that way we have a, a blinking light, in essence, is what we're going here for. You'll notice that we read the analog potentiometer again. So let's talk about that for a minute. We get a potentiometer value from 0 to 1023. That means our delay could be anywhere from no delay whatsoever to one second. So when we delay here, that means if we turn the potentiometer within that one second, there's going to be some kind of um, slowdown for our analog system. Then we delay it again down here when we turn it off. So it's really a two second delay, which really makes our potentiometer not very responsive. So in other words, we turn the knob and then it takes up to two seconds for the light to change its speed. In order to make it a little bit more responsive, down to a one second delay, we're gonna read the potentiometer again down here. So that way at most, we're gonna have a one second delay right here between when we read the analog value and when we change the delay. So it's theoretically possible that we could have it on longer here and off for shorter period of time here because we're reading the value again here. 
So this is why we're doing it twice, to make it more responsive, and we have at most a one second delay. Other piece of information in the code that we need to pay attention to is you'll notice up here I have declared the pot value using a data type called int. It's an integer. We talked about that before. But I did not declare it again down here because I already declared it up here. So we don't need to declare it more than one time in each block of code. So this is where the declaration happens. So I'm going to let you pause the video and enter in that code. It's also inside of the course management system and give that a try. Okay, so let's talk about a digital read, uh, excuse me, not a digital read, an analog read where we're reading the data from the potentiometer. We're not going to change the circuit at all. All we're going to do is just change what we do with the pin. Instead of outputting the information on the pin, we're going to read the information. So we're still setting up the LED pin at three. We still have our pot pin at um, A0, which is our analog. Then we're, that's going to set up globally. Then we're going to set up our pin modes, just like we did before. And you notice our loop is actually a lot less complicated. We're not doing any delays or lights on and off. All we're going to do is leave the light all the way on. But instead, we're only going to send a portion of the data. So notice we're using a different kind of analog right here. So we're going to read the data. I'll get back to this four in a second. And then we're going to write the data to the LED pin, which is going to control how bright the potentiometer makes the LED. Now, you remember when I said that the digital read has 1,024 different possibilities of ranging of 0 0.005 volts? Well, that's only for the digital, the analog out. It does not work for when we do a analog read. So we have to divide that number by four. So we're going to take that 1024, which is our analog read, and before we output it, we have to divide that number by four because the analog write is eight bits. We can only store 225 different voltage values when we write out that voltage. So instead of being 0 0.005, it's going to be one, uh, four times that voltage, or um, 0 0.02 volts of an interval. It's still a pretty small interval for most of us when we're going from 0 to 5 volts, so we shouldn't notice too much of a difference. But when you put this in, you'll now be able to turn your dimmer and increase. It's a dimmer, right? You can increase the brightness of the LED and decrease the brightness of the LED. I'll give you a chance to work on that code. So that is it for our lesson today. I'd like you to give a chance at trying this code on your own and submitting it for us. And I'll see you next time.